Hi, welcome to the sewing room. This is the birthplace of Noble Elegant, the finest clothing for kings, queens, dukes, jesters, and anybody else. Here you see some of my fabrics in the case. These are usually more the high-end fabrics. I have everything from silk to taffeta to brocades. This is just a small sample of it. Up on top, We've got some material that's been used in other um, projects that I've done throughout the years. And then, of course, the great big rack of fabrics. Up on top, broadcloth. This is what I use for all of my men's shirts and the linings of all the gowns. I've got some in the washing machine. Let's go take a look at where it starts. We start out. What we do, you always have to pre-wash your fabric. This is kind of a small batch of fabric for me today, only 15 yards. We have an event coming up, the St. Patrick's Day Parade, and of course, the queen needs a new gown. Into the dryer on high heat, you want to make sure that you get all the sizing, any loose dye out of it, and you get it shrunk down. As I said, our next event that we have coming up is the St. Patrick's Day Parade. While the Queen needs a new gown, what do you do? Figure out what gown that you want to make and then you go for it. I don't use commercial interfacing, I use canvas. Canvas is what I will put on um, in the middle, sort of like the cream in an Oreo cookie. And I put the boning which holds me in on the canvas. The boning won't pull away from the canvas the way that it can from it commercial interfacing. So we're going to take the pattern and we're going to cut three pieces for each pattern piece. We're going to have an outside, a middle, and an inside. To make my gowns, I generally I use upholstery fabric for the outer parts of the garments. They tend to hold up better than a regular apparel fabric. Also, instead of commercial interfacing, I use canvas, and then I attach the boning to the canvas. It holds up better um, throughout the summer with all the sweating and everything that we do. Generally, a man's doublet takes anywhere from 5 to 12 hours to complete, depending on the pattern and if there's any special things that need to be done to it, um, any alterations or embellishments. A uh, lady's dress, if it's a formal court gown, it'll take three hours just to cut the material out, let alone finishing all the edges and then putting the, the dress together. Here's the royal wardrobe. We have gowns of every type, color, shape, size, men's shirts, and, of course, the Archduke's doublets. We've got gold, we've got plaid, we've got blue, we've got pearls. We even have arming jackets for jousters. These are some of the specialty things that I create. This arming jacket is made for a man. We'll go right underneath the suit of armor. Also do ones with Kevlar inserts so they don't get their armor bites. Up top you'll see hats. Of course, the wigs parasols, and boop, unmentionable corsets. Every time I would on a gown, corset goes on underneath. Just wait till you get to see the dressing of the queen. Again, dresses of every color, shape, size, and the underskirts that go with them. If you take and you make an underskirt that is different colors, you can mix and match your gowns. This gold underskirt can go with three different gowns that I have in my wardrobe. Okay, now, I have my corset and my knickers on. Two very important things that you have to have on before you put any Renaissance garb. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to put on the chemise. The chemise is a loose-fitting undergarment that the ladies wear. And it's similar to a, a long t-shirt. Now the fun begins. We're going to put on the hoop skirt. Then 
they didn't have wonderful Tudor sleeves on this chemise, it would be a little bit easier. Make sure you get your hoop tightened around. There you go. All right. Now we need the underskirt. The underskirt is a contrasting, contrasting skirt that goes over the hoop, but under the overskirt. Wow. Novel concept. It's always easier to have somebody help you get dressed. And now you can see why noble women had people help them get dressed. It takes quite a while to get this all done. Next, we have the overskirt. This overskirt itself weighs approximately 15 pounds. Hand it to me, please. sure that it's nice and snug. Last thing you want to do is be walking down the lane and you have your skirt fall off. Been there, done that, don't want to go back. Whoop! Like I said, been there, done there, don't want to go back. Next is the bodice. This bodice has lace-off sleeves, so you can wear it with or without the sleeves. Now comes the fun part. The person doing the dressing gets to tie you up. Well, we don't have any laces in this. The lace is right there on the floor. Since zippers weren't invented, we don't have that. We have to do plain old, everyday, ordinary lacing, similar to that that you would find on your shoes. Each one of these pearls is individually hand sewed onto the gown itself. I wore this dress last at the Ohio Renaissance Festival. Great festival. If you ever get the chance, between Labor Day and the second to last weekend of October, and you're in the state of Ohio or anywhere around it, I would definitely suggest going to the Ohio Renaissance Festival. It's in Harveysburg. And there you have it, all dressed, ready to go. All I need now is my boots, makeup, and hair. That's another 20 minutes. <laughs>